Hello everybody, welcome to one of my videos. My name is Jamie, I'm from Wins Games. Today we're doing an unboxing video. This was sent to me by Bulldog Games. Not only is he an awesome subscriber, he's an awesome YouTube channel as well. Huge shout out to Bulldog Games, please check it out. He does reviews on CC4 and Amiga games mostly, usually uploaded every two weeks on a Sunday, usually. Now he has done some streams, but not for a while, but hopefully he'll do more in the future. But that was mostly on PlayStation 4. So a huge shout out to Bulldog Games and thank you for the donation. It's also included a letter. Thank you very much. Hey Jamie, please find and close a few little things to celebrate your Shadow Beast 1 and Shadow Beast 2 live stream completions. They were amazing to watch. I'm looking forward to seeing the trilogy mastered soon. Also, these are a little thank you for the support of my channel. Your kind words and shout out is all very much appreciated. It's not a problem at all. It's been great watching your channel grow and the community you've fostered for a long time now. I know you've been exhausted recently to so try and take it easy. Hopefully these items will help you relax. Unfortunately, there's nothing really retro in this package, but I hope you enjoy them all the same. Keep up the good work and looking forward to your next video. All the best, Brett. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. First things first, we have a Worms WMD t-shirt. And I like blue. I think most blokes will probably say that. But yes, blue is my favourite colour. That and red. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll be wearing that very, very soon. Now Brett knows I'm a big Team 17 fan, he knows I'm a big fan of the Worms games as well. And I don't have all of them because there's just so many of them, but there's some of them. A few on the PlayStation 2, Worms 3D and Worms 4 Mayhem. And on the PlayStation 1 with Worms Armageddon, I've played it for years. Now because he knows I'm a big Team 17 and Worms fan, he's given me these Worm plushies. One of them is just the normal one with a great big grill on his face, like Bobby B. And we have a pirate. They, they're brilliant. They're so good. Follow Game on Stuff on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. They're brilliant, mate. Thank you. And also, we have a pin badge, which is also Worms WMD. I don't know how well that's going to come out on this video. Mate, it's too good to use. It's too good to use. I love that grin. And he's got one of those bands around his head, like he's going to do a kamikaze move. Fantastic. Now, he's also sent me some games. Games on the Xbox One. This is Ukulele. Uh, this is the original Ukulele, which of course is Team 17, and it's sealed. Brilliant game. I haven't played it for ages. Now, quite recently, I did buy Ukulele in the Possible Layer, which I played on that pickup video. And there's quite a lot of outtakes on that one. But this is tremendous. Buddy up with an epic adventure. Meet an unforgettable cast of characters and hoard a vault load of collectibles as buddy duo Yuku and Lele embark on an epic adventure. Explore epic platforming playgrounds, meet an unforgettable cast of characters, conquer boss fights, minecart challenges, and more. There we go, mate, thank you. There we go, Ukulele Playtonic Limited 2016-2017. I haven't played this for a while. Bad news. Okay, the slot game is Ukulele, a platformer game published by Team 17 in 2017 for Linux, Mac, Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Developed by Playtonic Games, the former key personnel from Rare, Ukulele is a spiritual successor of the Banjo Kazooie series released from Nintendo 64 20 years prior. Right, we start things off by talking to the snake. Yeah, All right, pals, yeah, lovely yeah, to yeah, see you. Yeah, yeah. Hi there, I'm Yuka, and this is my buddy, Layli. Do we know you? Of course, it's me, Trouser, the honest and dexterous salesman. Yeah, I remember, you're the crook who sold us that dodgy fat screen. Nope, not me, you're a surely mistaken friend. Hey, Trouser, do you happen to see a magical flying book go through here? For five quills, I did. You're in demand. Now this book business has kicked off. Perhaps you can find enough in those treasure chests laying around. 
I already tried lockpicking those while Yuka was asleep. No chance. Ah, to unlock them, you need on my trademark special moves. By using X, our green friend here can perform the towel twirl attack. It's smashing. Press X to attack. Got it. Excellent! Now go whack those treasure chests and bring me my five quills! Okay, so when you start the game you don't have any skills, but now we do. Use your tail to break the chest to gain quills. I have a quill, one of 200 on each world, that's how you purchase new moves. Now the worlds in this game are absolutely gigantic. Now I have played this before, but I haven't played it for a very long time. But I haven't got very far, because it's so gigantic. Now. We've got to find these quills. Now, you do have a spin attack, which is similar to the one that you probably would get in a lot of other games, including maybe a little bit of Crash Bandicoot, or maybe even Croc. So, we've got to try and find five quills. Now, butterflies can be found as well. I'm a tasty butterfly energy. Be nice and let me to refill your power bar. Quite a jolly character, because you'll just eat him. Anyway, we need to find quills, not butterflies. There's not going to be found here to drain our energy anyway. Huh? I mean, it looks spectacular. It's a really, really good looking game. There's some more butterflies, but it's actually quills we require. There's three. Okay, this should be our fifth quill. There we go. Five quills. Ah, yes. That seems to be enough to jog my memory. Come back here. Oh, he could have done it himself. He's too busy talking on his telephone. On we go, let's go talk to the, the snake. Go on then, Lisby, <laughs> spill the beans. Where's our book? Your book headed towards the business beyond this gate. Strange things going on in there since the takeover by Ivory Towers Corp. I'm headed there myself to sell some moons. Allow me to raise the gate. Nice. Come on, Yuka, let's get that book back before Trouser realises we didn't give him enough quills we found. After years of playing, developed a new game, Playtonic Games initiated a Kickstarter campaign that attracted significant media coverage and raised a world record. Two million pounds. The game follows Chameleon, Yoka, and a bat Laylee on a quest to retrieve a magical book from the evil corporation. And your character can spin, can do double jumps, and also can crouch and swim. In the water, we can use Let's to Swim. Yeah, yeah! And A to raise, and left trigger or X to descend. We'll all read the manual. We'll better watch the air meter, though. We don't want to drown. No, we don't. That'd be silly, though, wouldn't it? So, let's go on the water. So, we have those bubbles at the top left corner of the screen. That is our air. Now, there's a bit of the sharpest knife in the drawer, but if that goes, we drown. Okay. Now, there's not a lot of enemies at the early stages of the game. Now, also, you can get additional abilities over the course of the game as well. At the moment, we can't go up there because we're going to slide down on our bottom. So we'll come back here later when we have an additional ability. But we'll go through the tunnel. Okay, we have our first enemies. We're going to hit them with our tail, which is used by pressing X. And they go flying across the screen and they burst into a puff of smoke and then release into a butterfly. But because our energy is good, we don't need it. If we were low on energy, we could shoot the butterfly. Ukulele received mixed reviews. The critics divided on whether emulating its predecessors was enough to make it a successful game, or whether it was purely trying to capitalise on nostalgia. While most critics yeah, agreed yeah, yeah, it was yeah, capturing yeah, yeah. the essence of earlier platformers, they also pointed out technical shortcomings and outdated gameplay. A spin-off, Ukulele yeah, and yeah, the Impossible yeah, Lair, was released yeah, on yeah, October 8, 2019. Right, there he is again. The guy with the dotty trousers. Okay. You've got up some speed with your basic moves. Yuka gave himself a short tutorial on the way in. Smash it! Time to put your skills to work. I've spotted a piece of your book. 
Where is it? It's going to be up high, isn't it? It always is. Yes, it's right up there. A page with a smiley face. Why don't you go ahead and collect it and find out what's going on? I go myself, but I've got an important call coming up with the world. One box is after one of my super moves. Yeah, right. So let's try and get that page now, shall we? Which is on the top of that statue. Now that statue is the statue of the big bad boss in this game. Who is a bumblebee. Ukulele is a platform game played in a third-person perspective. The gameplay is similar to that of the games of the Banjo Kazooie and Chameleon Twist series. The player takes control of two characters that work together to explore environments, collect items, solve puzzles, and defeat enemies. Playable characters are Yuka and Malchameleon, and Lele is a female bat. During their adventures, Yuka and Lele explore worlds contained within magical books and complete challenges to collect pages. Golden book pages that act as currency in the game. Players can use their pages to unlock new worlds and expand on those that have already been unlocked. Right, we've got to try and get to the top of that statue. That was really difficult to read and do this game. Okay, let's use that double jump wisely. Now we've got to get over there. But luckily, platforms are moving backwards and forwards to help do that. Now this is a game I've played quite a lot, but not for a very long time. But I can't get very far. And in fact, it's been so long, I've pretty much forgotten how far I've got. I've got a lot to do, that I'm absolutely sure. Right, there it is. You are having trouble. No, I haven't. I found it. There we go. We found our first paging. There we go. Fantastic. And everything talks in this game. But they don't speak English. Hello there. Who might you be? It's me. I'm a paging. I live inside the all-powerful one book. The one book, how much is one of those worth? The one book is incredibly powerful and it's been stolen by the evil capital B. If capital B unlocks the power within his crooked company, we will have the power to rewrite the universe. Luckily, us pages have fled the one book and gone into hiding. Without pages, the one book is just an empty shell. If you use me to unlock one of the grand tombs in this factory, we can transport to another world and search for more of my friends. You know what, this is very difficult to read when I've got e -ha -e -ha -e -ha going in my ears. Don't worry, we'll help you, Paigey. Come on, Daily. let's find one of those grand toms and search for those pages. There we go. Now, you can, Laylee, can learn a variety of abilities, including the solar blasting, tongue ripping, sky soaring, easy barriers for temporary powers such as fire breath and the fart bubble for breathing underwater. Most of these abilities can use a power meter that is filled by collecting butterflies, which can be eaten instead to restore health. Look, Lakey, a Paigey in a cagey. Amazing. Okay, something a little bit different now. We're going for a race. It's ukulele versus a fluffy cloud wearing a crash helmet. Here we go. Shut yourself in. One lap. First through all gates wins. Now, he has an advantage. I do not. I have a disadvantage because I've got to keep rolling. Rolling like there's no tomorrow. I'm rolling more times than the Biscuit Greatest Hits album. But I've got to keep my finger on the button to keep it rolling. But I do have a disadvantage because I've got to keep consuming butterflies. At the top left corner of the screen, there is a green bar, which is draining because I'm holding my finger down on the button. Now, I've got to keep eating these butterflies, otherwise I'll run out. And when you run out, you cannot roll like the biscuits. Now, these butterflies are very, very tiny, and you need some perfect timing jumping here. Now, if you want to, you can actually stop rolling and consume it with your tongue. But, that will slow you down. For reasons I don't need to explain, we need to keep going. At the moment, I'm winning. I've also got to go through every one of these rings. Miss one, and you're going to be in a whole world of trouble. This is just one lap, which I'm very pleased, because if it's more than that, I will not be able to do it, because I'm always going to be overtaken by a fucking cloud. There we go! I won that one. Impressive! I can't believe you finished ahead of me. Yeah, yeah, hand over the pagey candy floss features. 
Oh yes, of course. To the victor goes the spoil. You pair earned it. There we go, he just pooed it at me. There we go. We have another page. Okay, final piece of footage for this game. This is Run the Gauntlet. The game features a local cooperative multiplayer mode for two players. There's also two to four player local multiplayer mode with eight different mini games. The game also features an optional single bit mode which simulates the graphical appearance of the N64 games. Right, Run the Gauntlet. All simple. Shoot the bad guys. Now, Lane is actually running on your own. You can move left and right with the left analog stick, and you move the crosshair with the left analog stick, jump with the A button, and shoot with the X button. And that's all it is to it. Kill as many enemies as you can. Now you can take hits here, you do have an energy bar here. And you can also get a small weapon. There's no time here. It's awesome. Right, first post shoot is here. It's quite difficult to run up with tanks of wood. Right, rapid fire. I like that a lot. Hold the fire button down, you can see you're shooting. Right, don't run into a wall, or don't run into a tank of wood. Now that weapon does actually run out very, very quickly. Now you also get another weapon, which is a grenade. Again, it runs out very, very quickly. Now enemies can be high, they can be low, and sometimes can be under things, or on the left or right of things. Some of them can be difficult to see, because there's just so much going on. Some of them are in the distance, way, way, way in the distance. And some of them are high under stones. Or hide on top of the fences, under the fences, whatever the case may be. Or hide on top of the trees. They're there. They're everywhere. Okay. Now your character is not running all that fast, but in a way, that's probably a good thing. I think this running at really, really fast speed will be ridiculously difficult. Now this enemy here does take a couple of hits, but he does explode. Right, grenade shot. It's grenade! But not as good as the original shot, I think. But if you time it right, you can get multiple kills. Right, there we go, we see the ending in our sights. I did miss quite a few, but no one's trying to read. There we go. 8,700 points. There we go, that's Ukulele on the Xbox One. Okay, another game in here, it's sealed, never played it before. This is Flockers by Team 17 on the Xbox One. I've heard of it, but I've never played it. New from the creators of Worms, Flockers. Got to say this very, very carefully. This springs to mind, meet the, yeah. Flockers is a modern day take on the classic A to B puzzle genre with a generous helping of dark humor for good measure. Held in captivity within the evil thrall of their fiendish masters, the sheep are finally making a dash for freedom. But without your guidance, they are destined to die in the most horrific ways as they follow each other into diabolical traps, giant meat cleavers, spikes and deadly other obstacles. Now I'm guessing these are the sheep from the game Worms, and also a little bit like Lemmings. That's going to be quite fun to play. Flockers. Flockers, released on September the 19th, 2014, and I'm playing it for the first time in 2020. Okay, this is the game. This is Flockers. This is on the Xbox One. Flockers is a living style strategy game made by Team 17. The game was released worldwide on September the 19th, 2014. Right, it's very, very lemmings. And these are sheep. At the moment, they don't have any abilities. Climb up those metal crates ahead using the one block halt formation. So, we pick up abilities by picking up crates. So, we select the block and we place it where it says so. And that gives them a little bit of a a helping hand. So that poor sheep is actually having them climb up on his back to get over the grates. Right, now there's going to be lots and lots of hazards here. A lot of hazards. Right, that is the furthest you can zoom in. Right, jump the gap ahead by using the jump ability. It allows sheep to clear small gaps. But only when you pick up the crate to do so. Right, okay, so we need to make them jump. Do it now. 
Lemmings can't fly, and neither can sheep. However, they can in some of the Worms games. Right, so when you click on them, it gives them a woolly hat. A purple woolly hat. And that allows them to do jumping. So again, very, very like Lemmings. Some versions, when you give them an umbrella, they hold an umbrella in their hand. That wasn't the case in the later version, but some later versions, that was the case. Right, something's going on off screen. We've had some deaths going on. Right, okay. Right, so how do you prevent that? I have no idea. We have the release, we have the jumper, and the super. I'm not quite sure what the release does. One thing's for sure, that definitely did release, and it, it made some casualties. Okay, uh, so we have the climbing ability. So, we give them a cape. And this will allow your sheep to climb. So now they can climb, and they can jump. We have 17 left. Unfortunately, we don't have 17 sheep left. Right, wooden crates can be destroyed. Try blowing up the crate ahead using the explosion ability. This poor little sheep is left behind. Right, okay, so... A lot going on here. Now, luckily, they don't fall from great big heights. If this was lemmings, that would be the case. Right, so we have an exploder. We're gonna wait for the one remaining to arrive on the scene, and then we're gonna go for it. Now they can climb very, very quickly. So, we've got to blow up this crate. I'm guessing just one sheet is enough ammunition to do so. Yes, that is the case. A few deaths again. Right, we have a great big blade. Don't like the look at that at all. Now this is the exit, and I'm assuming this is some kind of checkpoint, and that's a camera. Right, okay. Right, so when the camera spots them, the hazard is then released. So that wasn't actually done. We lost quite a few there, but then that was my first time. Okay, I didn't realise you actually picked this up at the end. So what we're going to do is place it here so they don't press that button. That should hopefully stop quite a few from getting killed. Because that is a sensor. And... There you go, so that will save quite a few of them. Brilliant, because that did seem a little bit wrong, the fact that so many get killed so quickly, and I didn't know how to prevent it. So, what we do now is, once they are clear, you can then set them on their way, and set them back to normal sheep again. And then it will drop, and more sheep survive the day. So, 17 and 18, that's the best goal I've ever had. Go with that. Right, cleared. One star. Still one star. Two stars. Not three, though. But we'll go with that. Two is better. We are rated 3,896 in the world. Okay, this is level two. Now, floggers receive mixed or average reviews according to Metacritic. Scoring 66 out of 100 for the PC version based on 11 reviews. 61 out of 100 for the PlayStation 4 version based on... 15 reviews, and 65 out of 100 for the Xbox One version, based on 10 reviews. Right, this level doesn't have a lot of hazards whatsoever, but we do have these blocks. They can use these blocks, but only once you've got them. Place them in a the space divided. When they go through the sensor, the platform will drop. When that happens, you can release the one that's getting the bad back, and set him on his way. Right, we pick up this one, the more blocks it has the more sheep it requires. So this one requires three. Again, they'll walk on there, onto the pad, it'll drop down, and then these ones are also save their backs. But make sure you do it from the top downwards, that way the one at the bottom doesn't turn round. Right, on we go. Again, the platform has dropped. Let's release them. Top, middle, and bottom. There we go. Now over here is another section where there is a weight gauge. Now we pick up another block, which this one definitely works in the way as a blocker on lemmings. Now I'm going to place it here, make sure you place it on a flat surface. This one you need to sheep, but this time the, they can't walk over them because it works as a wall. Now I'm going to place another one there in the space provided. Now here is a weight gauge. Now the amount of sheep on it will increase its weight. So you need a certain amount of weight to set it on its way. So I'm going to let them get into a pack, and then we're going to release them. 
and sheep can die if they fall from big heights. I found out on my previous attempt. Now this is actually a teleport. When I go through the teleport, that will take them up to there. And this is again a hidden sheep, which I can get, but I'm not going to get this time. I'm going to try and get 50 out of 50. So the more sheep, the gauge will increase. Now hopefully, they will get on there before it drops. Because a sheep falling from a big height is going to result in one dying. Now, as random as it sounds, we have 50 sheep, but the required quantity is actually one. We can do so much better than that. We're going to go for 100% on this one. Right, down we go. So, we're going to release them again, start from top, and then go down to the bottom. There we go. We've rescued all of them, apart from the hidden one at the top. Well, I don't think that counts. That's a bonus, I believe. There we go. I like the intro stage. They get sucked through a pipe. It's a tough world for a sheep. That is sure. I know my maths isn't fantastic, but that is 100% in my book. Cleared! Counting sheep! We have two stars. But not three stars. I am ranked 5,565 in the world. I've got three stars for that. Fantastic! Okay, third level and the final part for this part of the video. At the moment, we have no additional skills. Right, we pick up the first crate, which contains one block. One block requires one sheep. Place it in the space provided. So we'll go down here, hit the switch, and the wall will drop. And then we release him from his pains. At the moment, he's been trampled on by multiple sheep. Your work is done. Pick up the second crate. Two blocks requires two sheep. Place it here, and it don't fall to their death. And speaking of falling to their death, they will fall to their death if they do not have the super ability, which is the cape. If they don't have that, yes, they'll fall and they'll splat, and it's a nasty experience. Right, once it's safe, release them from their pain. Your work is also done. Pick up the third crate, and we get this one. Three sheep required here. Place it here, and then they go through the teleport. And that takes you way, way, way over here. Will we find more sheep? At the moment, they're fast asleep. And we have another ability. Which is going to work as a wall. And we place it next to the mine. We don't want sheep to be blown up by a mine. However, it might happen. But we will definitely be gaining more sheep. At the moment, they're fast asleep. Place one over here. We don't want them to fall into their death. Right. We gain more sheep. But over here is a, a pit and some spikes. That will go through a sheep like knife through butter. So wait for the right time. But in the meantime, let's set these ones on their way. Because once again, their work is done. We want to try and rescue as many as possible. The more, the better. They'll go through the teleport. And we're going to try and rescue them in a great big pack. Now, any additional ones you rescue are not going to have any skill. So make sure you set them on their way. And if it requires a long drop, make sure you give them a cape. At the moment, we don't have the cape yet, but later on, we will. Right, wait for the spikes to drop, and we'll go through it. Right, it's safe. We'll go for it. Right, we pick up the jumping ability. Now, if you press the X button, this great big circle appears. And you can actually select multiple at once, before they're in that circle. Which gives your finger a little bit of a rest. And that works for the super as well. And we pick up the explosion very, very soon as well. At the moment, we have 41 on the screen. And all of them can fly and jump and climb. But unfortunately, one of them is going to explode. Sorry about that. So go up there. It's going to be the first one. Up it goes, and it's going to die. There we go. Right, now, because they all have capes, they're going to take a great big leap of faith, but they will be surviving that. They should do. Now, we're getting some more. But again, use the multiple weapon and slip them all at once. Down here, we have to use this. We can actually rotate it, place it there. Right, we have some more. So once again, we're going to use this super. Any additional ones you have will not have that ability. Right, we have a hidden sheep. Place it there. 
One should jump up to it and open it and regain it. Continue. I shall indeed. First, let's set these on their way. Right, that one, that one, and that one, and it should climb. There we go. All is good, all is well. Set these on their way as well. One, two, and three. There we go. They jump into it. That's just showing off. But this one can't jump, so never mind, he's walking. There we go. Flock and a wee. Two stars. Three stars and we gain the golden fleece bonus. There we go. I am 94th in the world. Now that I am happy with. And there we go, that is Flockers. Okay, last item in this box. All we have left is packaging. This is on the Xbox One. This is Aven Colony. Mate, I've never heard of it. Never heard of it. Build a new home for humanity. Discover Aven Prime. An alien planet of deserts, tundras, and jungles light years from Earth. Build, discover, and survive. Take charge of humans' first extrasolar settlement of a new alien world. Build and expand your small colonies into massive sprawling cities. Deploy your crack team of pioneers to take on alien life forms and unlock the secrets of Aven Prime as you tackle the campaign and sandbox modes. Prepare for harsh winters, electrical storms and much more in this cool and often dangerous new environment. Mate, thank you very much. We'll play it. Aven Colony. Never heard of this game before. We're playing it for the first time today. I have to admit, it does look quite spectacular. Now, I do like building games. I've said it before on some of my earlier videos, but I've never played any building games on the Xbox One. So, at the moment, we are currently a colony governor. Not bad for a starting point. So, let's go for options. Right, crisis game speed, one time speed. Verbal crisis warnings on. Subtitles off. Invert camera off. Rotation speed. We'll just leave it unchanged. Just, I'll go with that. What is that thing? Find out soon enough. Okay, this is Avon Colony. I have never played this before. Moving the camera, good place to start. Welcome, Governor. Let's start with the basics of controlling your colony overseer drone. Please try the following left analog stick. Okay, we have a green light. Right, move it with the right stick. I can handle that. That I can handle. Right with that. There we go. Two green lights. To run the colony effectively, you will need to be able to see everything from near and far. It's like flockers all over again. Each day on Avon Prime is called a soul, but it lasts much longer than a day on old Earth. The leftmost progress bar in the indicator panel shows the progress of time through the current soul. A soul is divided into four seasons. During winter, the sun goes down. It becomes difficult to grow food, and solar panels generate less electricity. This is going to be complicated. TV's going to turn itself off, as you can't see, only I can. Right, press down. Electricity indicator. The electricity indicator in the indicator panel shows your current power supply and demand. Your solar panels are generating 36 power, but the rest of your colony requires 43. As a result, your storage depot was automatically switched off. I've got a feeling this is going to be quite complicated. I love building games, but I don't like it to be too complicated for me. More than I can handle. Right, advanced training. Okay, that was the easy bit. An introduction to some of the more advanced concept of colony management. Food indicator. Well, that <laughs> that's quite important. Building a farm. Now select a farm for placements and select corn as corn type from the crop selector in the upper left. Note that you will do so. You will see coloured squares indicating how good each location is for growth corn. Okay. Your colonists need food. We all do. And water to survive. We all do. As your colony expands, you will have more and more hungry mouths to feed. Uh huh? Right, I cannot find my base. I've lost it already. I've actually lost... I've, I can't find my base. Um... Oh, just found it.
The employment overlay shows where your colonists live and work. The purple bars represent where the colonists live. And the green bars represent work sites. Okay, I've finished the training session. I truly believe this is going to be very difficult to master. Um, right, new mission available. Welcome to Vanar. Vanar is a small colony in one of the friendlier parts of Avon Prime. Water and plant life are plentiful here. And most crops grow well. First, we'll need to supply water, build a water pump, and place it next to your base. You can find them in building menu, water extraction structures. Objective, build a water pump. Reward, 16 nanites. Right. Right, water extraction structures. Build a water pump. Water pump, that one. Uh, nine and out to build requires five power for workers. Right, we have a water pot. Oh, okay. I've achieved my first thing. Right, I'm building a water pump. Avon Colony is a city building strategy video game developed by Mothership Entertainment and published by Team 17. The better was released on September the 8th, 2016 on Microsoft Windows. The main story revolves around a human colonization of an alien planet in which a new colony must be built in order to survive. Right, I read that at the same time it took to build it. Right, that is my water pump. Right, press Y. Why? Because it asked me to do so. Objective completed. The following was added to your colony's adventure as a reward for completing the Welcome to Vanar mission objective, build a water pump. 16 nanites. Now what? Now, what do we go for? Corn? We'll go for corn again. Not talk about the band, even though I do love that band. Right. There's my farm. Hello. Hello, Governor. I wanted to remind you that the mission objectives from my team are here only to guide you. While several of these objectives are necessary in order to complete your mission, your first priority should be the safety of your colony. As an experienced colony governor, we trust your judgment, and I urge you to take your time and put your colonists ahead of your mission. Good luck. Thank you. Wind turbines. We need a bit more electricity to expand further. Your colony already has a solar panel. Let's build a wind turbine next to one of your other buildings. You can find the wind turbine via the building's menu, electricity structures. Objective, build a wind turbine. Rewards, five nanites and 16 candy. Now that would please a lot of children. Right, go. There you go, there is my turbine. That is a gigantic turbine. Right, new mission available. I think another mining facility would be a good idea. I totally idea. agree. We need a source of metals. Let's build a mine. The best place to put one is right on top of the big green copper deposit next to the Prometheus lander. You can find mines via building menu mining structures. Right, reward is six nanites and sixty wheat. Right, okay. Right. Building a mine on copper. That mine is now mine. Right. Next. So we have a farm. We have a turbine, a mine, and we have an award. What we got? Your progress is satisfactory. I've been authorized to provide your colony with a small reward. Choose wisely. Right. We're pleased with your progress and have decided to offer you colony a choice of additional resources. The Ninites will help you with construction, or you may wish to select the rice or quinoa to help keep your colonists well fed. We'll go with rice. Yes, rice. Rice is nice. Okay, we need more power. Look for the steam slowly rising from the bubbling puddle just outside the colony and cap it with the geothermal generator. Remember to connect it to your base with tunnels to ensure that it can transmit the power to your colony. You can find geothermal generators via the building menu, electricity, structures. <laughs> Awards! 7 nanites and 21 porridge! And I've porridge for years! Show me! Okay. Tunnels. Right. We're going to need some more living space for your colonists. 
build an outpost, you can find them via the building menu, residential structures. <laughs> Reward, 7 nanites and 23 soda. Interesting rewards here. There we go. That's my outpost. Avon Colony involves building a new human city on Avon Prime, an alien planet that are light years away from Earth. The player oversees construction with resources and people within the colony. The colony must be built from scratch and over time, additional colonists will arrive. There are many different buildings, ranging from tent-like buildings to skyscrapers and space elevators. These buildings serve many purposes including oxygen creations, living quarters, food cultivation, resource mining, protection of the colony, exploration and expansion. Flying drones are used to build, upgrade, recycle and manage anything in the colony. Right, okay. Success. It's getting dark around here. Down the bottom of the screen we have our cystics. And we have 16 people and they're all happy. So that's a good thing. Flying drones are used to build, upgrade, recycle and manage anything in your colony. The colonists themselves travel around walking or in hover cars. There is a day and night cycle. And during the night cycle, everything freezes over so food will not grow and solar panels work at 50%. The colony must also cope with various environmental conditions including storms, dust devils, toxic gas and shard storms. There is an alien called the Creep which grows over building covering them in its tentacles. However, drones can build to remove the Creep. There are other alien threats that may attack the colony including plague spores, hovering guardians and cultish airships. These attacks can be defended against the foe, building defensive structures to protect the colony. Research can be carried out to improve the crops that can be grown. And there are other dozen different types of crops. There is a morale system which can be influenced by several different factors including food, living conditions, employment, crime and social polities set by the player. Regular elections are held in which the citizens can sack the player if morale gets too low. Ancient alien artifacts can be discovered and used as the colony expands. Sub-colonies can be built in the area surrounding the main colony. There are four different types of sub-colony. This game is good, I love it, but it's very, very complicated. Luckily, it's actually telling me step by step, but eventually those step by step are going to disappear, and I'll be on my own. Right, there we go, that is a big immigration centre. Right, well, okay, look at that, that's cool. Superb, that will bring more people to my city. Right, new mission available. Right, our population has increased to 24. We've got to reach a population of 50. Right, like growing melons. <laughs> the inhabitants of the colony ship have grown tired of their rations and they are demanding melons. Our sensors indicate that those should grow quite well in Vanar. Of course, in order for your colony to expect melons to us, you will need to grow them first. Use your farming structures to grow 100 melons. That's a lot of melons. Right, so we need melons. There we go. There's your melons. Right, there is our farm, which is growing melons. We've got to grow 100 melons. Reach population of 50, we're currently at 31. We have a new mission available. Right, we're now currently growing broccoli, because we need to export 200 broccolis. Right, defense buildings, lightning tower. Right, we have a lightning tower. Superb! Building a lightning tower. That is a big, big tower. That's the size of that. That's gigantic. Right. We have another reward. We have 60 nanites, 14 immigrants, or 228 potash. Whatever that is. We're going for some potash. Colony, raw materials, 60 in colony inventory. A potassium rich salt that serves as an excellent fertilizer can accelerate food cultivation at farms and greenhouses. Go with that. There we go, that's more than enough footage for this part of the video. That is Avon Colony and we've reached 104 population. Okay everyone, that's the end of my video. A huge thank you to Brett from Boardlog Games. Thank you for your gifts and a huge shout out to Boardlog Games. I'll put a link to your channel in the description below. Please do check it out. And this is Jamie from Wordless Games. Please like, please comment, please share, and please do subscribe to my channel, Facebook fan page, or Instagram, or on Twitch. 
Just type in Mordless Games, you find it fairly easily. And please remember to click on the bell icon that will notify you in videos that live. Fantastic. Want to do new sort of videos and do retro long plays about cheats, have a big making, and live streams every Friday night at UK time at 8 o'clock. So, hello, my way. Till next time, take it easy. Ciao, bye. See ya. More electricity. Like most buildings, the gym. Outtakes. We could probably. Uh, build a farm somewhere near the edge of the colony. Ad adjacent. Uh, flockers. Was it. Oh my god, I can't. Ukulele is a platform game published by Team17 in 2017 for Linux, Mac OS, Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Microsoft Switch. Jamie doing this again. Microsoft Switch. No. It is not Microsoft Switch. It's Nintendo Switch. Jamie, please don't do this again. Okay, this other game. This is Flockers. Now, left trigger zooms in. No, it doesn't. It zooms out. 